Question 1. What scales are used for magnitude or intensity? Answer. Seismic scales. Environmental seismic intensity scale. ESI. European macro seismic scale. EMS. LA2. Medvedev Spanuokonik. MSK. Modified Mercalli. MM. Pivolks Earthquake Intensity Scale. PIS. Shindo. Question 2. How does the Richter scale answer? The Richter magnitude scale was developed in 1935 by Charles F. Richter of the California Institute of Technology as a mathematical device to compare the size of earthquakes. The magnitude of an earthquake is determined from the logarithm of the amplitude of waves recorded by seismographs. Question 3. What is the difference between magnitude and intensity? Answer. Intensity. The severity of earthquake shaking is assessed using a descriptive scale the modified Mercalli intensity scale. Magnitude. Earthquake size is a quantitative measure of the size of the earthquake at its source. The Richter magnitude scale measures the amount of seismic energy released by an earthquake. When an earthquake occurs, its magnitude can be given a single numerical value on the Richter magnitude scale. However, the intensity is variable over the area affected by the earthquake with high intensities near the epicenter and lower values further away these are allocated a value depending on the effects of the shaking according to the modified Mercalli intensity scale Question 4. What is the Richter magnitude scale? Answer. The Richter magnitude scale, also Richter scale, assigns a magnitude number to quantify the size of an earthquake. The Richter scale, developed in the 1930s, is a base 10 logarithmic scale, which defines magnitude as the logarithm of the ratio of the amplitude of the seismic waves to arbitrary minor amplitude. Question 5. What is the magnitude and intensity of an earthquake? Answer. The intensity is a number written as a Roman numeral describing the severity of an earthquake in terms of its effects on the Earth's surface and on humans and their structures. Several scales exist but the ones most commonly used in the United States are the modified Mercalli scale and the raw c Farrell scale. Question 6. What is the magnitude of an earthquake? Answer. Magnitude is a measure of the amount of energy released during an earthquake. It may be expressed using several magnitude scales. One of these used in Southern California is called the Richter scale. Question 7. What are the costs of geophysics? Answer. Cost is, of course, a key consideration. Most environmental and engineering geophysical surveys have a cost structure that is similar to that of any licensed professional. An hourly consulting fee plus equipment rental costs. In addition, there are associated costs of mobilization. Since most geophysical surveys require acquisition of data in the field, instrumentation, amortization, data processing and interpretation, and report writing and presentation. Ultimately, the application of geophysics must be assessed in terms of its projected costs and benefits as indicated above. EEGS professionals are trained to advise in developing cost and benefit assessments. It makes no sense to conduct a geophysical survey if the costs are projected to exceed any possible economic gains or to exceed the project's operational budget. In general, however, geophysical surveys are almost always substantially less expensive than traditional non-technical means of investigation such as excavation or drilling. Question 8. How are geophysical methods applied in practice? Answer. The implementation of geophysical methods is a structured process that consists of a number of key steps including initial evaluation of the problem at hand, i.e. what is the suspected problem, what initial information is known about the site, what additional information is required and what are the desired outcomes. Determination of which geophysical method or combination of methods will yield the optimal results. Not all methods will be applicable as noted in some of the links above. Therefore, it is critical to carefully assess which methods are most likely to provide data and information relevant to the problem of interest. Also, while some methods may provide information, they may not be cost-effective in a particular context. Identification of the scope or size of the required geophysical coverage. Assessment of the way in which the data and information are to be acquired, interpreted and presented so as to address the issue at hand. After these basic questions have been answered and the project approved the geophysical work will commence typically environmental and engineering geophysics consists of field surveys conducted along oriented lines ie survey grids over the desired area of interest for more information on field surveying you may want to refer to the links provided above in the what geophysical field methods are available section 
Question 9. What geophysical methods are available? Answer. Horizontal loop electromagnetic apparatus is used to locate conductive zones that may be leach out tape plumes. As noted previously, geophysical methods as applied to environmental and engineering geophysics were derived from other principal areas of subsurface investigation, including petroleum, mineral and groundwater exploration. The methods or techniques most commonly employed by practitioners include electromagnetics, gravity, ground penetrating radar, GPR, magnetics, resistivity, and or induced polarization, seismic refraction, and or near surface seismic reflection, spontaneous potential, or SP, induced polarization, or IP. Question 10. What are the benefits of geophysics? Answer. Data from very low frequency electromagnetics have been converted to electrical current density and depth. The dark blue color indicates the core of a leachate plume emanating from a landfill. Environmental and engineering geophysics offers a unique window into the earth as a means of detecting subsurface conditions and its relevancy lies in the concrete and cost-effective benefits it delivers. These include non-destructive. It is ideal for use in populated areas areas such as cities where many of today's environmental and engineering issues arise. It also means an archaeological site can be examined without destroying it in the process. Efficiency It provides a means of evaluating large areas of the subsurface rapidly. Comprehensiveness Combinations of methods i.e. multidisciplinary methods provide the means of applying different techniques to solve complex problems. The more physical properties that are evaluated the less ambiguous the interpretation becomes. Cost effective Geo Physics does not require excavation or direct access to subsurface, except in the case of borehole methods where access is typically by drilled holes. This means vast volumes of earth can be evaluated at far less cost than excavation or even grid drilling methods. Proven, the majority of techniques have been in existence for more than a half century and are mature, yet still relatively undiscovered and underutilized by desis iron makers who face complex environmental and engineering problems. Question 11. What are the types of problems addressed? Answer. The sledgehammer provides a source of energy for determination of the depth to water table and bedrock. Generally, environmental and engineering problems fall into the following classes or types. Infrastructure, highways and bridges, groundwater, exploration and contaminant mapping, geohazards, earthquake mitigation and collapse structure mapping, urban utility mapping, underground storage tank location, geologic mapping, archaeology, i.e. illegal burials, etc. Civil engineering, non-destructive testing, entity, so-called brownfield and landfill investigations, unexploded ordnance, UXO detection and characterization, dam safety. Question 12. What is geophysics? Answer. The subsurface site characterization of the geology, geological structure, groundwater, contamination and human artifacts beneath the Earth's surface based on the lateral and vertical mapping of physical property variations that are remotely sensed using non-invasive technologies. Many of these technologies are traditionally used for exploration of economic materials such as groundwater, metals, and hydrocarbons. Question 13. Give a formula which relates wavelength and frequency. Answer. The equation that relates wavelength and frequency for electromagnetic waves is lambda nu equals c where lambda is the wavelength, nu is the frequency and c is the speed of light. Question 14. Where do the shallow earthquakes occur? Answer. Most earthquakes are a result of fault movement in the crust, a relatively thin layer on the Earth's surface. In Cascadia, most earthquakes are shallow quakes that occur within the crust of the North America plate to a depth of about 20 miles 35 km. Question 15. What causes a deep focus earthquake? Answer. A deep focus earthquake in seismology is an earthquake with a hypocenter depth exceeding 300 km. They occur almost exclusively at oceanic continental convergent boundaries in association with subducted oceanic lithosphere.